Good morning. My name is Tim, and I'm bringing you good news for today, for Wednesday, September 22nd. Uh, I'm on my own today. My wife Nikki has been visiting with her sister in Calgary for the last week and a bit, and uh, I'm anticipating, hopefully, that she will return later tomorrow. Um, today's reading uh, is from the Gospel, is from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 to 48, and I'm going to read that now. You heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, don't use violence to resist evil. Instead, when someone hits you on the right cheek, turn the other one towards them. When someone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your cloak too. And when someone forces you to go one mile, go a second one with him. Give to anyone who asks you and don't refuse someone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for people who persecute you. That way you'll be children of your Father in heaven. After all, he makes his sun rise on the bad and good alike and sends rain both on the upright and the unjust. Look at it like this. If you love those who love you, do you expect a special reward? Even tax collectors do that, don't they? And if you only greet your own family, what's so special about that? Even Gentiles do that, don't they? Well then, you must be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. That uh, is actually uh, uh, quite a challenge. Just as your heavenly Father is perfect, be perfect. Um, in fact, it seems almost like hyperbole, but nevertheless, uh, I also um, that that passage has a number of uh, a couple of uh, sayings in it that are almost iconic: um, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and go the extra mile. Um, very interesting. Another of the readings for today includes uh, this from Paul to the church at Corinth from uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. In this chapter in, uh, in 1 Corinthians, Paul is uh, a bit disappointed. He's expressing his disappointment with the church at Corinth for sort of uh, backtracking a bit on their, uh, on their faith and reverting back into old ways of uh, antagonism and whatnot. He says, actually... To have lawsuits with one another at all represents a major setback for you. Why not rather let yourselves be wronged? Why not rather put up with loss? But you yourselves are, wronged, are wronging and defrauding people and fellow Christians at that. Music has been a big part of my life since my early teens. My wife, Nikki, will attest to the fact that often some song will come to me in response to something that I've heard or read. This reading very early uh, brought to my mind the song Fragile, sorry, composed by Sting. The song is called Fragile. And the particular line that I've been brooding on, in a sense, is nothing comes from violence and nothing ever could. I'm actually going to take the liberty of reading this song as a poem. So the, the title is Fragile. If blood will flow when flesh and steel are one, drying in the color of the evening sun, tomorrow's rain will wash the stains away, but something in our minds will always stay. Perhaps this final act was meant to clinch a lifetime's argument that nothing comes from violence and nothing ever could. For all those born beneath an angry star, lest we forget how fragile we are. On and on the rain will fall like tears from a star, like tears from a star. On and on the rain will say how fragile we are, how fragile we are. 
We are indeed fragile, both in body and psyche. We so easily become angered by some affront and we lash out, at least I do, and I don't think I'm alone. In our reading today, Christ actually quotes from the Old Testament, where in Leviticus 24, verse 20, from the Common English Bible, we read, If someone injures a fellow citizen, they will suffer the same injury they inflicted, broken bone for broken bone, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The same injury the person inflicted on the other will be inflicted on them. Depending on how literally someone reads scripture, this might seem like Christ, who is God incarnate, is contradicting himself. I prefer to see scripture as sometimes people putting words into God's mouth, so to speak, and other times God, Christ, putting words and thoughts into people's minds. For me, this is one such case. The Old Testament needs to be read in the context of the time it was written and the state of humanity in that era. That certainly, at least, is my opinion. Please pray with me as I offer this prayer that it comes from uh, a website uh, that called uh, entitled consecratedhearts.com uh, and I'll put a link in the, in the video for this. God of goodness, you know that the violence in our community is out of control. It is taking our helpless and innocent ones. It is taking our children. And we confess that beyond the violence in our streets is the violence in our own hearts. We can contribute to a culture of violence whenever we give in to hatred, fear, indifference, and our own self-satisfaction. It seems that we are growing numb to the suffering, the loss, the indignity done to our sisters and brothers and to our earth. But in our hearts and in the heart of the community, help us to value life and beauty over instant satisfaction and to value sharing over greed. Empower us to acknowledge and affirm our children, our spouses, our neighbors and seek respect of respectful solutions to our conflicts. Create through us a world where it will be easier to be good. Your spirit given to us is not timid. Therefore, each of us can do something, person by person, family by family, community by community, to realize that we are one, one body, one people, one earth. By your design, we thrive or we perish together. Holy One, give us the grace of hope. Give us the dedication to goodness and truth as we seek to restore our community to wholeness and life. Enable us in this way to take back our city from the violence and crippling fear that we find in our midst. Trusting that your desire for us is peace, not disaster, we pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you, folks, and I wish you a great day, and uh, we'll see you the next time I'm back. Bye now.